guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I do my foundation application. As you can see, I've already taped and done my wig caps, I've done my brows. Uh, both of those are in two previous videos. And uh, having done that, I've also put uh, some MAC Prep and Prime on my skin to prepare it. And before that, I shaved, cleansed, and moisturized, which I think is super important for a smooth application of makeup. Um, let's just get started. We're going to go right in. I'm going to be working with three different colors today, and I really like the Kryolan TV Paint Stick. Um, you can get it directly from Kryolan. You can order it from them, um, but I would suggest finding a location that sells it first so that you can actually go in and try a few different colors. I think trying to pick your color off of the little swatches that they have online can be really misleading because depending on, on the levels of your screen, the color may look totally different on your computer than it does in person. So I took the time. I went to um, Namie's in Burbank. They've got a huge selection of Kryolan and I tried a bunch of different colors. I bought my original from them. Them. And then now that I know what my colors are, I just reorder from Kryolan and it saves me the trip to the, the beauty supply store. Um, I go in with two sort of flesh tone colors that are really close to my own skin. Um, one is a little bit lighter, one is a little bit more mid-tone. And then I use a dark one for my contour, but I use it very sparingly because I like a much softer, more blended look. But I still think everybody can use a little bit of... Um, contouring. And I also like to use um, concealer and I use the Kevin O'Quan Sensual Skin uh, Concealer but I use it very sparingly because a little goes a long way. You can already see I have some around my brows. I like to blend and buff that out a little bit so I just get more of a seamless line. And uh, we're going to go in with, this is uh, FS45. This is my lighter color. So I use this really where I want more of a highlight so the t-zone the nose around the brows just around uh, the cheekbones and then I do the upper lip and then my chin and then I go in with my mid-tone color which is 6w and this is going to help transition the lighter color into the contour color and so this one goes over my face tape, down the side of my face, under here, and then it goes around the forehead, and then on the temples. And then I go in with my dark color, I use NG2, and it is a really dark color, but I use it sparingly, and I use it with um, an applicator brush. This is an Ingolat brush. It's an old one, uh, so I don't know what type of brush it is, but any sort of dome-shaped foundation brush with synthetic uh, fibers will work best for something like this. So I load up the brush and I go right in on top of my 6W, which is my mid-tone, but I just kind of dot it on. I use it sparingly. I'm just trying to create a little bit of shadow here. I don't want it to look like I have contour on my face. And I find that cream contours can get really heavy really fast, but I still enjoy using them because they give me another layer underneath my powder contour. And, and if you're on stage or if you're in the studio with studio lighting, that can really wash you out. And I think anytime you can add extra depth and dimension, you create a more realistic look to your makeup. And that's what I try to do by blending all of my colors together. I also like to put just a little bit up here, make the forehead a little bit smaller. And then little bit under the jawline right here but not too much because sometimes I find it can actually accentuate a jolly look if you're not careful and you don't want to talk while you're doing this because if your jaw moves then you can get the line to come further up and just make sure you just get a nice tight line there. We're going to blend it and diffuse it anyway. And then lastly, I just take a little bit and I just come down the back of my jaw, like in front of my ears like that, just to kind of bring things in. I used to come down like this 
and it looks great straight on, but the second you take a picture or you turn your head to the side, you just see this line of contour and it looks really unnatural and clockable. So I use face tapes. I'm on a diet to lose more weight, working out again to try to get my face to most naturally look the way that I want it to. And then I'm gonna go in, this is a Sephora con uh, concealer brush. I was gonna say contour, concealer brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Kevin O'Quan Sensual Skin Moisturizer, and that's gonna go on the back of my hand. I'm gonna warm it up with my body heat so it becomes a little bit easier to work with. And this is just gonna go under the eyes like this. And then I like to put a little bit on the lid as well, and it acts as like a eyeshadow primer. I love product, I love doing makeup, I love playing around with it, but sometimes the amount of product you have, um, it's just a little too much. So less is more in my opinion. Um, but as long as you're having fun and you're comfortable with what you're doing, then you're gonna have a great time and produce your best work. And then what I do is I take a dampened Sephora Beauty Blender and I just blend everything together. Now, I like to start with my lighter foundation color. I don't want to start with my darker color because that can darken the lighter color and I don't want that. And I'm really careful around the brows because I took a decent amount of time to do these brows and I don't want to mess them up or diffuse them too much by being sloppy in my blending. So I'm blending in this now mid-tone color with the lighter color on the lower half of my face to get a nice blend. Now I'm going to go in and do my concealer. And I feel like the order that I do it in maintains the lightness of the concealer, but it doesn't look super garish because having that little bit of the lighter foundations help to blend the concealer a little bit more. And I do like to pat it in under the eye, but I don't go right up to the brow because I like that little bit of punch that the concealer leaves. It's like a natural highlight under the brow. And then once I've done that, then I can go in and start blending my contour color. And I start with the cheeks just because those can look really heavy and really unnatural super fast. So before I get a lot of my contour color built up on my beauty blender, I wanna make sure that I get the blend that I'm looking for. And then I can come in on my forehead and I blend that. And I don't do any cream contour on my nose because I do contour my nose a little bit, but my nose has this, it's, it's okay right through here. I contour that a little bit, but then I have this like sort of like little berry on the end of my nose. And I like it because it's not perfect. And I like, there was something about, again, the 90s supermodel aesthetic. It was super, super glamorous, like Amazonian, but it wasn't about perfection. It was about celebrating the way that you looked and, and working with what you had and, and just feeling beautiful about it all. So I like that little sort of like Linda Evangelista kind of, non-perfect, non-button nose that I have. And then I just blend all that in. And then I take a little bit of whatever's left over my and I stretch it down. I don't like to apply actual makeup to my neck because it gets everywhere and a lot of times it's hidden in shadow. And you can do a lot with your powder foundation too down there. Now don't get me wrong, you need foundation down there. And I have foundation down there because I've got a lot on my sponge. It would be different if I started on my neck. And then I take a little bit and I just go over the ears. I don't like to get a lot of makeup in my ears, but sometimes I'll wear my hair back to one side and I just like it to not look so garish. And then I'll finish up with whatever I have left over on my highlight brush and I just kind of come down the center a little bit and then a little on the forehead just to give me a little extra. Because we all like to be a little extra sometimes. I'm 
make sure you get all the little nooks and crannies. Because you don't want to have any spots where the makeup has settled into or not gotten into. And I just kind of blend it on my lips. It's a good idea too before you do your makeup, exfoliate your lips. Um, I love lip exfoliators. They smell good, they taste good, they feel good. But if you don't have the money for one, you don't have to spend a bunch of money on a lip exfoliator. When you're brushing your teeth, just take your toothbrush and run your toothbrush across your lips every day and that will help to exfoliate your lips and give you a nice smooth clean finish when it comes to your lip application. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with powder and uh, we're gonna set everything and powder. Um, I, I know some people, sorry if I'm out of focus, sorry about that. Uh, some people like to use three or four different powders to set their makeup. I don't. Um, but what I do is I take a translucent, a true translucent, meaning there's no color to it, it will not alter your foundation in any way, and then I combine it with a warmer foundation just to create a glow. And the ones that I use are um, the, I like the Kryolan translucent powder, and then I use the Ben Nye banana powder. And what I do is I take half of the translucent powder and half of the banana powder and I mix it together to create this sort of hybrid highlight slash translucent powder and I just feel it works really well. And again, I go in with a um, Sephora, oops, Sephora Beauty Blender. Um, it is damp and I just wring out all the excess moisture. I just feel it gives me a much softer finish because powder um, can really look cakey sometimes and I don't like that. And I just start going in and I don't want to move the makeup. So if you're too aggressive, if you're beating the mug too much, you can take some of that foundation off, which isn't good. So what I'm doing is, is I'm really just pressing the powder into the makeup to set it. And just being really cautious as I go around my brows. but I am using a liberal amount of powder and you can see the powder as it's setting the cream foundation gives it a much softer, more natural look and it just keeps it from going anywhere. And I just work my way down my face. I start with the nose, go up to the forehead and then just work my way down. Not for any particular rhyme or reason, that's just my pattern. I don't really get the upper lip because when you start to sweat, at least for me, it starts on the upper lip. So I want to make sure that all that is really powdered down. Plus, the mouth is such a dynamic area. There's so much movement that if you don't properly apply and set your makeup, then you run the risk of it shifting and moving while you're wearing it. Go over the face tape. underneath and just keep working that down and remember I don't have too much makeup on my neck because I really don't need that much and I feel like the more makeup I put on my neck the more you can see the texture And now that that's sufficiently powdered, then what I do is I just take a large fluffy brush, this is an Ingolot powder brush, and I just wipe off all the excess. And at this point, I go over my eyebrows because they have just been uh, set with a wet product. And that little bit of powder transfer helps to set them without lightening them up too much. Because if you go over your brows, with a translucent powder and just bam, 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 set them like that, you can actually soften the look a little bit. Um, you lose the dimension and all that hard work that you did creating the brow. Now you can use color correctors. 
I do use color correctors from time to time, especially if I have events or shoots or whatever that I'm doing where I'm two or three days in a row and my skin gets super irritated from shaving so much. Um, then I'll use a color corrector because it helps me kind of fudge the shaving a little bit. But for today, I got a really super clean shave because I hadn't shaved in a few days. And I feel that when you're working with something like Kryolan TV Paint Stick, it is a full coverage foundation. There's not a whole lot that's going to get through that um, unless, you know, my skin is just irritated and I don't want to be so aggressive in the application. So then a little color concealer would work. And I'll probably do another video later on um, on color correctors and the proper way to use them and different colors for different areas of the face because all we're doing is just trying to combat unwanted undertones that threaten our end result. So it's fun but it's it's a little bit more than what I think you would do for just a regular foundation especially if you're doing full coverage so if you have any questions please comment down below don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time thanks bye